Thank you very much, Terry. And many thanks to all of you for being compassionate, humane, thoughtful persons who are deeply interested in the world in which we live, how improvements might occur, and the faith that you have in the young leaders of the future. To my privilege for coming before this group as we have visited with at least a dozen alumni of the YES program and to talk to them about what's occurring in their countries, the types of projects that they will be initiating or, or at least serving when they return to their countries. And likewise, to gauge their views or whether they have been observing American politics of all things. I'll leave them here. I'm sure all of you have, and I would just say that um, I will make some comments today that are not meant to be editorial statements, or hopefully will not ruffle any partisan feathers. Uh, but at the same time, why YES program came about because a very strong bipartisan feeling that led Senator Kennedy and me to have the support of the Senate and Congress to initiate the program. I think in about 2003 or thereabouts, whenever I come to the graduation programs, and I think I've had the privilege of addressing almost all of them, I try to remember back to the history of exactly what they did all of this happen. But what is more important is that each year we see the students after we've had almost a full year in American communities with American families, high school associates and friends, and uh, it's a very exciting situation. I have to uh, visit with many of them prior to making my remarks and find out literally what has happened in their lives. I, I identify with them slightly. I was a student that went abroad to study at Oxford University in England on a scholarship. This was my first trip outside the United States. I didn't live with a family. I was there at Pembroke College, Oxford, but spent a lot of time with families and friends who were there in the college. I chose Pembroke because it had no American students. I wanted total immersion with uh, British students that returned out with others who were there at Pembroke in African countries, Russia, Germany, elsewhere. Uh, it was an eye opener. One of the reasons that I'm so excited about the YES program is that I know that uh, at that point in my life, I realized how big this world is, how potentially successful certain countries are and how dangerous situations may be. Uh, it was um, an awesome experience to begin traveling in other countries with the students from Oxford, to gain impressions of all sorts. Uh, I would just say that um, I'm so pleased that at this point in our history in the United States, we have had uh, the good sense to note that there are a good number of countries on this earth that have a significant Muslim population that uh, we are going to need to have in each of those countries not only confidence in future centers, but likewise confidence in the leadership. That there are many things that we can do year by year to provide opportunities for that leadership. And I, I mentioned this specifically because the high school experience, at least uh, for me, I think for each of the graduates I saw through the day, was a, a time of great formation. I, I, I learned um, to be competitive. Uh, I learned good sportsmanship, I hope. Uh, I learned also um, about all the opportunities there were academically, uh, as well as uh, many uh, socially to, to enjoy it life. Uh, it, it was a very formative experience. And I, I'm so pleased at this point that we have so many students who are, are eager to come to the United States. I'm equally pleased that there are so many of you who have volunteered 
I will hear year after year provide extraordinary programs and support for our students. I always indicate that the graduation ceremony that I find that each one of the students I'm addressing really is a, a courageous soul. Uh, at the time that I was uh, in high school, I don't think that I would have considered venturing off to uh, another country. I don't think I would have prepared really to live in another country with family and go to high school, preparatory school, as you might call it, in that situation. But uh, these students are. Uh, they are brave uh, and they are bright. Now, let me just say, have I seen elections locally with people from the Senate, the House, local officials? Some idea of how our campaigns work or don't work very well. They have uh, heard a lot of rhetoric, maybe frequently, in some cases, about their country or about their religion or uh, about other things that are very important to them. And uh, clearly, they are trying to weigh exactly what is occurring in this country. And what the relationship is going to be of this country to the countries that we'll be returning to, uh, hoping to take up leadership roles. It is a situation which is our business for some of the graduates before coming in to this assembly. Uh, we've had uh, a budget offered by the president that cuts the State Department budget by 27% or thereabouts. Uh, that means that almost all of our foreign assistance programs are severely cut, some wiped out in that proposal. Uh, it, it is the budget, as a matter of fact, that in terms of many of the feeding programs, which I was heavily involved with the Senate because I served as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee for a period of time and Republicans were in the majority, as chairman of the Agriculture Committee. Great time when we were in the majority, or ranking Republican member when we were now in the majority. Um, I come from uh, a farm background. My dad studied agriculture at Purdue. Uh, I've been managing a family farm for 24 acres in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the last 50 years since we died. And uh, so corn, soybeans, hardwood trees, that's the things that are very much on my mind. <laughs> But uh, so has been likewise the feeding program uh, throughout my home state of Indiana. All the ways in which people who do not have very much income have some hope that they're getting a meal. Uh, I've been very much involved uh, <coughs> likewise with all of the feeding programs, increasing the farm budgets uh, for school children. Not only during the school year, but finally during vacations, the first experiments of that occurred in my early years in the Senate. These are our, our, our critical elements. And uh, so, in addition to the State Department budget being cut 27 percent, which has been commented on widely, the agriculture budget has been cut almost the same amount. We really don't know what parts of it or exactly how that will all turn out. Uh, now, one Feature that uh, I was mentioned today, and I hope that I'm not overtaken by a guest, is that uh, most budgets, if not almost all budgets in recent years that have been offered by presidents, have never been adopted. I was uh, in a program uh, introducing some of the teaching comments of Maine this past week. After I left the Senate for the past uh, four years, I've been head of something called the Lizard Center, which is a small think tank. And we worked on arms control situations. I was involved heavily with Senator Sam Nunn of Georgia in uh, attempting to work to take out the former Soviet Union missiles and warheads that were aimed at us. Um, but also, I was involved in, in agricultural pursuits. And uh, so, this has been very much on my mind. And I, I would just say, uh, uh, <coughs> We have heard that their students in college make almost the same prediction to a group of ambassadors, 20 of them, the Center of Sponsors for the Lecture Series 
from Capitol Hill on Tuesday, because they were all worried to say leave. Ambassadors, all the countries that were around the table. Oh, it's not the president's budget. How do we arrive at what happened? Well, that's a long story. I first came to the Senate. We used to go through a process in which each of the major committees, like agriculture, had an authorization bill. They set forward a plan of things that were important for the country and uh, suggested that we adopt it. And so these, all these authorization bills would come before the Senate and they'd be adopted. Then we have the Appropriation Committee, Spending Committee, who came along and put the funds behind each of the objectives of the Authorization Committee. And this required them passing all of these bills. A lot of bills, a lot of votes. Uh, and eventually the President had to sign off on all this. Now as time went on, during the period of years I served, there were fewer and fewer authorization bills passed, simply because the Senate ran out of time or did not want to spend time debating all these bills. And finally, very few appropriation bills were passed. You say, well, how then do you ever get to a budget? Well, it's through a so called continuing resolution. The continuing resolution is often characterized as keeping the can down the road. In other words, you take the same figure that you had last year adopt that for next year. And um, sometimes there's slight variation. Uh, I'm not predicting that that will occur this year. It did, the State Department budget will not be 27% down, it may be about the same. But we may have something much more close to that. I hope that that will be the case. I, I think that we are in the early stages of an administration, and I'm not going to be super critical of it today, simply because uh, these are folks that are new. We have a predicament that uh, maybe was not foreseen, in which for some reason there have not been appointments made for our ambassadors. The 50 or 60 countries, usually the largest one on this earth. So those of you uh, who are involved in any particular country do not have any idea right now who our ambassador might be or others who might accompany the ambassador. That will occur at some point, I hope sooner than later, but nevertheless, that's the way it is. Even with our Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, he has no Deputy Secretary of State, as a matter of fact, no Assistant Secretaries. Some characterize the seventh floor of the State Department as well as an empty, with the only Secretary Tillerson there, and the days that he comes into the Department. Now, that will not work very well for long. But nevertheless, that's the case of the, of the situation presently. Um, it appears perhaps that the administration or those that were around the president were not really prepared for all of the appointments, the filling out of our government, and the suggestions that have been made. So it will occur, but it's occurring. And I mention all of this because many persons were friends of yours and mine from other countries. Uh, write about this. They're worried about this. They, they hear statements and they wonder. They hear statements leaving aside our budget and our own State Department as to how strong our alliances are with other countries. Earlier on, uh, the President seemed to have made some adverse thoughts about NATO, the North Carolina Treaty Organization. Uh, he's changed that uh, a good bit in more recent statements, as I understand it. And Secretary of State Tillerson, and he addressed the UN Security Conference recently, was very strong about NATO. That should be reoccurring. But at the same time, all of us have to understand that uh, NATO has been a way of keeping peace in Europe uh, for about 70 years. There had not been a, a single millennium prior to that time of having warfare among some governments in Europe. And I'm telling you, in a situation in which there has been no conflict, and the United States and Canada in a transatlantic way are involved, and um, that is important to maintain. Important to me uh, to understand and to revere. Likewise, uh, some comments have been made about NASA, North Canada, and Red Bull, 
and I have to see this here in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Um, and building a wall and all that type of thing, which is out in Mexico. That, that brings up, of course, a delicate issue because it, it says we don't want immigrants coming into the United States. As a matter of fact, we're going to try to chase down everybody, find out whether they have the proper credentials. I think so, and we're going to have to And to prevent this occurring again, build a wall, a gigantic wall. And when it comes to countries that have a large Muslim population, the rhetoric becomes even more severe. The thought is that uh, the, the world is unsafe because of the Islamic State or ISIS, that uh, there are terrorists, not only in the Middle East, in the Bible, but uh, persons who come from the Middle East to the United States to cause harm, or people who are in Muslim congregations even in the United States were somehow caught up in the caliphate uh, idea and are prepared to create harm. Uh, in, indeed, there are some such persons. But uh, the president uh, has gone a long way when we have a situation which um, we can stop any uh, flights of people from other countries, seven to begin with, and six that have a heavy Muslim population, stop them from coming into the country. Now, the court system in the United States has worked and said that's very uh, unconstitutional. As we budded the first two attempts by the president in this respect, but to say the least, it's created a great deal of turmoil and conflict. Not only in the United States, but in many other countries. They've been affected by all of this. So I, I come to you today as a, a special gratitude because as volunteers, you have come at a time to serve in you know, which uh, a sense of understanding, uh, and a sense of wisdom about our own political system, as well as what's occurring abroad, is essential to bring the confidence to young people who will have great courage to come to the United States, to live with families, to go to high school, and who at the same time are confronted by all these headlines and all this adverse publicity. Now, this is a very important time for each one of us. Um, it stands our ground to fight wise and become as well informed as possible, and to reach out as far as possible, to bring confidence, to bring thoughts about the future, Bring thoughts about public service that many young people may be able to offer, maybe sooner than they thought, in their own lives, to make a difference in their country. And to bring, therefore, a, a foundation for even greater friendship between the United States of America and the countries that have heavy Muslim populations and all other countries that have them. So I was uh, very excited when I was invited to come to this particular meeting. I asked who will be there. So I was, I was told that these are volunteers, people who give up their time merely because they love students, they love their country, they love other countries and the international realm in which we're involved. I salute each one of you. I pray for your success and I'm grateful to have been a part of the meeting. Thank you for joining us. Uh, 